the Northwestern Wildcats. Now, we we like this team. We have been up to Chicago to go see them just in the last couple of years. We we have buddies that went to school there, and we do have fun with Northwestern. Uh, my my first question here before we even discuss any of the numbers or anything is how sustainable can their one score wins be? Because it continues on and on and on. They they like to play in the mud. Pat Fitzgerald, uh, the number this year win total six. To go over is minus 135. To go under is plus 105. Uh, FBI projects them to go eight and four. Yep. Eight and four. Now, if you look at like returning proje- uh, production, they're like 126 out of 127 teams that played last year. That's kind of nuts because returning production is not always properly graded. The running back that is coming back for them only really came on strong in like the last two and a half games for him. The offensive line started to shift over late last year. Like, what you saw towards the end of the season is what they look to be this coming season. Now, you do have to swap over your quarterback, right? Peyton Ramsey, gone. In comes Ryan Holinsky, who has had starting skill or starting uh, experience in the SEC. They do have to change over their defensive coordinator. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, I, I do feel good about the offensive coordinator, Mike Bajakian. Yeah. Uh, Bajakian, whatever it is. It's Bajakian, it, I think. The uh, it, Are they going to be able to click as well as Peyton Ramsey and he did last season? Bajakian, Bajakian, God, whatever. Uh, last year, he called the offense almost exactly the way that I think that Fitzgerald wanted him to. And I, I'm wondering if he can do that again with another quarterback that will do exactly what he's supposed to do. I think they're going to open it up more. I think so, too. So, last year, you're dealing with all the COVID stuff. I definitely think this was one of those schools that knew they had a great offensive line, knew they had the best defense in the Big Ten that wasn't close, and thought, this is how we win. Yeah. If you know going into the season that you've lost a couple of big defensive players and you're going to have to open things up and score more, I I think – it also, you, you, you lost a, an all-world talent at offensive line as well. I I think, which I think their offensive well, I mean, line he, is going to be just fine. Like he he, didn't, even, he didn't play last no. year, yeah. But, like, it's it's just one of those things where I think they are going to open it up. Yeah, I, I think he brought in a quarterback that's a transfer of somebody who can open it up. A bit of a gunslinger. Because yeah. remember, when Brzezikian got hired on, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how much he went and got Ryan Helensky as much as it was just a – Helensky was the quarterback he got, he had. Yeah. This is a guy he went and got. This is a guy he he chose, he hand-selected. Yes. I, I think this team is going to be better. I think from the wide receiver position, they're going to be more open, which is going to open up running lanes, which is what Pat wants to do. Defensive coordinator, it's a big deal, but that was always Pat's defense. Yeah, I think Jim O'Neill I, I just, is going to do the same th- thing. This is one of those situations I talk about all the time where when the head coach is the architect of what, you do on that side of the ball. I kind of don't care who the OC or DC is. It just yeah. doesn't matter. It's just a placeholder because you're going to do what the head coach wants to do because that's his design. Yeah. Defense um, coordinator was, uh, was who Mike, uh, Hankwitz, I believe. I think it was uh, Hankwitz. Yeah. So, but he, he retired after 50 plus years coaching and last year might've been, uh, the best. Oh, the, it was defense the best, that they've done. Best, like, that's the best defense he's ever had in his life. Yeah. Um, now they got to replace six starters this year. Yep. I think that they got skill. I think they got guys. They've been in. recruiting. Yeah, they've been bringing in depth. This is a school that has done a lot. I think they're done with the win the division one year, don't make the play. Uh, don't you know? Don't make a bowl game the next. Win the division. Don't make the bowl game. Like I, I think we're done with that. I don't know that they win the division, but I definitely think this team isn't falling off. They're right in the conversation with Wisconsin and with Iowa as going to be fighting for this division. I also think this schedule opens up as flawless and perfect as you can have one. They won't play a ranked team until, I don't know, week 10, week 9. They Here's where they – so Michigan State, Indiana State, at Duke, Ohio, at Nebraska, bye week, Rutgers, and then Saturday, October 23rd, they go to Michigan. Think Michigan will be ranked by then? 
No, they might. They might. They I mean, might. They, that, I think it that's could. the first chance. It could. Uh, but but then you got Minnesota at home. You got Iowa at home, and then at Wisconsin, Purdue, and at Illinois. Because like there's a world yeah. where Michigan has played Washington and Wisconsin at that time. Yeah. And if they lose both of those, they're not ranked in this game. Which means that I don't know if Minnesota's ranked. So I don't think they would be. I don't think so either. Based on what we thought of them already, Iowa the next week is the first time they're playing a ranked opponent. And that'll be in November. No, that doesn't mean they'll be undefeated against that. We've seen Northwestern games before. Oh, yes. We've seen this story, all right? This is a team that that went undefeated in their division and lost three non-con games, two to, like, sub-football opponents. Yes. somebody else, yeah. yeah. Not, not just G5 schools, but little schools that yes. don't care about football. Oh, yes. So, well, it's because when, when you win ugly, there's always that chance. One mistake can cost you a game. Right. So... Yeah, so we're both going over, huh? Oh yeah, I'm I'm going way over. I think that eight and four is closer to what they can do. If they went nine and and, and three, would not surprise me at all. Me either. There's no world in which I see them. What was the number? Six. Six. Yeah. There's there's no world where they don't make a bowl game though. Looking at this schedule, I oh, I tend to agree. I think I Duke is trash. I think they're I think they're going to come after Michigan State because Michigan State was the team that knocked them off. Yep. They were they undefeated. Got them last year. And they were they were ranked they were ranked like top ten for the first time maybe in my life of watching Northwestern yes. football, and they got got and they got beat by Michigan State and they got beat bad because when ugly. you win ugly you can get got so I, th- I think game one they're coming for blood. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.